Hey guys, this is Allison from Alley Cat Creations. How are you? It's 90. I want to say it dropped to 96. Maybe 101 heat index. I have no AC. So that means I cannot do what I need to do to clear out my house at the moment. Fun times. It's too hot. I was out having a yard sale the other day and I am um, burnt to a crisp. Not that bad, but you can see my jewelry line. So what doesn't expend much of my energy? Reading. Although I'm gonna say, watch Ron Hall y'all because there's a lot of storms going on across the United States right now. It's just not one storm. It's all over the place. So please keep weather aware. The Arantia book. The administration of the local universe. Excited for this one. I also have a fan that might be a little on the loud side, so I'm going to project my voice a little louder. So I do apologize in that screaming, but it is beyond humid and hot here. I need air. At least it's hot air, but it's still flowing. So before I begin, please hit that like. Helps me out. Share. Because it's caring. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. They're still messing with my numbers, those people. Oh, yes, they are. And if you have it within you to help me and support my work, I've given you a dot to connect, a new book to read, an epiphany, anything. Please consider supporting my work at this moment in time. I'm doing everything I can to get things sold and to get myself out of this situation. But it, I, I'm doing it all alone and which is great and fine, but I could use your help. So anything that can help make my process a little easier and quicker, the better. I also dropped a lot of weight. I'm getting my muscles back, but I'm not healthy. So, and I still have the internet. And not that I like complaining because I don't. I just feel that we're all part of the same collective and we really need to start helping each other out. And maybe it might not be in the ways that you can financially afford, but maybe you know somebody that could have a moving van or a rental truck company or a dumpster company that might be able to help me. Just thinking outside of the box can help somebody. And I appreciate it because those things are extremely expensive and I don't have the money. for. So I could sell my house all day tomorrow, but if that money isn't in the bank and I have to wait, I'm screwed. Anywho, Administration of the Local Universe. This is paper 33. While the Universal Father most certainly rules over his vast creation, he functions in a local universe administration through the person of the Creator's Son. The Father does not otherwise personally function in the administrative affairs of local universe. These matters are entrusted to the Creator's Son and to the local universe, Mother Spirit, and to the manifold children. The plans, policies, and administrative acts of the local universe are formed and executed by this son, who in conjunction with his spirit associate delegates executive power to Gabriel and jurisdictional authority to the constellation fathers, system sovereigns, and planetary princes. Michael of Nebadon. Our creator's son is a personification of the 
611,000, is that all on? 121st original concept of infinite identity and simultaneous origin in the universal father and the eternal son. The Michael of Nebadon is the only begotten son personalizing this 611,121st mansion, wait, universal concept of divinity and infinity. His headquarters is in the threefold mansions of light on Salvington. And this dwelling is so ordered because Michael has experienced the living of all three phases of intelligent creature existence, spiritual, moranchial, and material. Because of the name associated with his seventh and final bestowal on Urantia, he's sometimes spoken of as Christ Michael, remembering that Christ is in office. Our creator son is not the eternal son. The existential paradise associated of the universal father and the infinite spirit, Michael of Nebadon is not a member of the paradise trinity. Nevertheless, our master son possesses in his realm all of the divine attributes and powers that the eternal son himself would manifest, were he actually to be present on Salvington and functioning in Nebadon. Michael possesses even additional power and authority, for he not only personifies the eternal son, but also fully represents and actually embodies the personality presence of the universal father to and in this local universe. He even represents the father son. This relationship constitute a creator son, the most powerful, versatile, and influential of all divine beings who are capable of direct administration of evolutionary universe and of personality contact with immature creature beings. Our creator son exerts the same spiritual drawing power, spiritual gravity from the headquarters of the local universe that the eternal son of paradise would exert if he were personally present on Salvington. And more, this universal son is also the personification of the universal father to the universe of Nebadon. Creator sons are personally centers for the spiritual forces of the paradise father son. Creator sons are the final power personality focalizations of the mighty time space attributes of God and the sevenfold. The creator son is the visurgent personalization of the universal father, the divinity coordinator of the eternal son and the creative associate of the infinite spirit. To our universe and all its inhabited worlds, the sovereign son is to all practi practical intentions and purposes God. He personifies all the paradise deities, which evolving mortals can discerningly comprehend. The son and his spirit associate are your creator parents. To you, Michael and the creator son is the supreme personality to you. The eternal son is super supreme and an infinite deity personality. In the person of the creator son, we have a ruler and divine parent who is just as mighty, efficient, and beneficent as would be the universal father and the eternal son if both were present on Salvington and engaged in the administration of the affairs of the universe of Nevedon. It's all about the Michaels. The Sovereign of Nevedon. Observation of Creator Sons disclose that some resemble more the Father, some the Son, while others are a blend of both their infinite parents. Our Creator Son very definitively manifests traits and attributes which more resemble the Eternal Son. Michael elected to organize this local universe, and herein he now reigns supreme. His personal power is limited by the pre-existing gravity circuits centering at paradise and by the reservation on the part of the ancients of days of the super universe government of all final executive judgments regarding the extinction, extinction of personality. Personality is the stole, the soul bestowal of the father but the creator sons with the approval of the eternal son do initiate new creature designs 
and with the working cooperation of their spirit associates, they may attempt new transformations of energy matter. Michael is the personification of the Paradise Father Son, too, and in the local universe of Nebadon. Therefore, when the Creative Mother Spirit, the local universe representation of the Infinite Spirit, subordinated herself to Christ Michael upon the return from his bestow final bestowal on Urantia, the Master Son thereby acquired jurisdiction over all power in heaven and on earth. This, this subordination of the divine ministers to the creator sons of the local universes constitute these master sons, the personal repositories of the finitely manifestable divinity of father, son, and spirit. While the creature bestowal experiences of the Michaels qualify them to portray the experimental divinity of the supreme being, no other beings in the universe have thus personally exhausted the potentials of present finite experience, and no other beings in the universes possess such qualifications for solitary sovereignty. Although Michael's headquarters is officially located on Salvington, the capital of Nevedon, he spends much of his time visiting the constellation and system headquarters and even the individual planets. Periodically, he journeys to paradise and often to Yversa, where he counsels with the Ancients of Days. When he is away from Salvington, his place is assumed by Gabriel, who then functioned as a regent of the universe of Nebadon. The Universe, Sun, and Spirit While pervading all the universes of time and space, the infinite spirit functions from the headquarters of each local universe as a specialized vocalization acquiring full personality qualities by the technique of creative cooperation with the creative son. As concerns a local universe, the administrative authority of a creator son is supreme. The infinite spirit as the divine minister is wholly cooperative through perfectly coordinate. The universe mother spirit of Salvington, the associate of Michael in the control and administration of Nevadon is of the sixth group of supreme spirits, being the 611,121st of that order. She volunteered to accompany Michael on the occasion of the liberation of paradise obligations and has ever since functioned with him in creating and governing his universe. The master creator son is the personal sovereign of his universe, but in all the details of its management, the universe spirit is co-director with the son. While the spirit ever acknowledges the son as sovereign and ruler, the son always accords the spirit on a coordinate position and equally of authority in all affairs of the realm. In all his works of love and life, bestowal the Creator Son is always and ever perfectly sustained and ably assisted by the all wise, ever faithful universe spirit, and by all of her di diversified retinue of angelic personalities. Such a divine minister is in reality the mother of spirits and spirit personalities, the ever present and all wise advisor of the Creator Son a faithful and true manifestation of the paradise infinite spirit. The son functions as a father in his local universe. The spirit as mortal creatures would understand and acts the role of a mother, always assisting the son and being everlastingly indispensable to the administration of the universe. In the face of insurrection, only the son and his associated sons can function as deliverers. Never can the spirit undertake to consent or contest rebellion or defend authority, but ever does the spirit sub sustain the son in all of everything he may be acquired to experience in his efforts to stabilize government and uphold authority on worlds tainted with evil or denominated by sin. Only a son can retrieve the work of their joint creation, but no son could hope for final success without the incessant cooperation of the divine minister and her vast assemblage of spirit helpers, the daughters of God, who so faithfully and valiantly struggle for the welfare of mortal men and the glory of their divine parents.
Upon the completion of the Creator's Son's seventh and final creature bestowal, the uncertainties of periodic isolation terminate for the divine minister and the Son's universe helper becomes forever settled in surety and control. It is at the enthronement of the Creator's Son as a master son, at the Jubilee of Jubilees, that the universe spirit before the assembled hosts first make public and universal acknowledgement of subordination to the Son, pledging fidelity and obedience. This event occurred in Nebadon at the time of Michael's return to Salvington, after the Orangian bestowal. Never before this monumentous occasion did the universe spirit acknowledge subordination to the universe Son, and not until after this voluntary relinquishment of power and authority by the spirit could it be truthfully proclaimed of the son that all power in heaven and on earth has been committed to his hand after this pledge of subordination by the creative mother spirit michael of nebadon notably acknowledged his eternal dependence on his spirit companion constituting the spirit co-ruler of his universe dominions and requiring all their creatures to pledge themselves to, in loyalty to the spirit as they had to the son. And there issued and went forth the final proclamation of equality. Though he was a sovereign of this local universe, the son published to the worlds the fact of the spirit's call e equity with him in all endowments of personality and attributes of divine character. And this becomes a transcendent pattern for the family organization and government of, of even the lowly creatures of the worlds of space. This is indeed, in truth, the high ideal of family and the human institution of voluntary marriage. The Son and the Spirit now preside over the universe, such as a father and mother watch over and minister to their family as sons and daughters. It is not altogether out of place to refer to the universe spirit as a creative companion of the Creator Son and to regard the creatures of the realms as their sons and daughters, a grand and glorious family, but one of untold possibilities, responsibilities, and endless wealth watch care. The son initiates the creation of certain of the universe children, and while the spirit is solely responsible for bringing into existence the numerous orders of spirit personalities who minister and serve under the direction and guidance of the self, self same mother spirit. In the creation of other types of universe personalities, both the Son and the Spirit function together, and no creative act does the one do aught without the counsel and approval of another. Pretty interesting. Gabriel, the chief executive. The bright and morning star is a personification of the first concept of identity and ideal of personality conceived by the Creator Son and the local universe manifestation of the infinite spirit. Going back to the early days of the local universe before the union of the creator son and the mother spirit in the bonds of creative association, back to the times before the beginning of the creation of their versatile family of sons and daughters. The first conjoint act of this early and free association of these two divine persons results in the creation of the highest spirit personality of the son and the spirit the bright and morning star. Only one such being of wisdom and majesty is brought forth in each local universe. The universal father and the eternal son can, in fact, do, create an unlimited number of sons and divinity equal to themselves, but such sons in unison with the daughters of the infinite spirit can create only one bright and morning star in each universe. A being like themselves and partaking freely of their combined natures but not of their creative prerogatives. Gabriel of Salvington is like the universe sun in divinity of nature through considerability limited in uh, attributes of deity. This firstborn of the parents of a new universe is a unique personality possessing many wonderful traits not visibly present in either ancestor or being of unprecedented versatility and unimagined brilliance. This supernal personality embraces the divine will of the sun combined with the creative imagination of the spirit. The thoughts and acts of the bright and morning star will ever be fully representative of both the creator sun and the creative spirit. 
such being is also capable of a broad understanding of and sympathetic contact with both the spiritual seraphic hosts and the material evolutionary with cre well creatures. The bright and morning star is not a creator, but he is a marvelous administrator being that personal administrative representative of the creator son. Aside from creation and life impartation of the sun and the spirit, never confer upon important universe procedures without Gabriel's presence. Gabriel of Salvington is the chief executive of the universe of Nevedon and the arbiter of all executive appeals respecting its administration. This universe executive was created fully endowed for his work, but he has gained experience with the growth and evolution of our local creation. Gabriel is the chief officer of execution for the super universe mandates relating to non-personal affairs in the local universe. Most matters pertaining to mass judgment and dispensational resurrections adjudicated by the ancients of days are also delegated to Gabriel and his staff for execution. Gabriel is thus the combined chief executive of both the super and the local universe rulers. He has at his command an able corpse of administrative assistants created for their special work, who are unrelated to evolutionary mortals. In addition to these assistants, Gabriel may employ any and all of the orders of celestial beings functioning in Ebidon, and he is also the commander-in-chief of the armies of heaven, the celestial hosts. Gabriel and his staff are not teachers, they are administrators. They were never known to depart from their regular work, except for Michael was incarnated on a creature bestowal. During such bestowals, Gabriel would ever attended on the will of the incarnated son. And with the collaboration of the Union of Days, he became the actual director of universal affairs during the later bestowals. Gabriel has been closely identified with the history and development of Urantia ever since the mortal bestowal of Michael. Aside from meeting Gabriel on the bestowal worlds and at the times of general and special resurrection roles, calls, mortals seldom encounter him as they ascend through the local universe until they are inducted into the administrative work of the local creation. As administrators of whatever order or degree, you will come under the direction of Gabriel. Interesting. The Trinity Ambassadors. The administration of Trinity origin personalities ends with the government of super universes. The local universe are characterized by dual supervision, the beginning of the father mother concept. The universe father is a creator son. The universe's mother is a divine minister, the local universe creative spirit. Every local universe is however blessed with the presence of certain personalities from the central universe and paradise. At the head of this paradise group is Nebadon, is the ambassador of the paradise trinity, Emmanuel of Salvington, the union of days assigned to the local universe of Nebadon. In a certain sense, this high trinity son is also the personal representative of the universal father to the court of the creator son, hence his name, Emmanuel. Emmanuel of Salvington, number 611, 611,000, 121 of the Sixth Order of Supreme Trinity Personalities is a being of sublime dignity and of such superb condensation that he refuses the worship and admiration of all living creatures. He bears the distinction of being the only personality in all Nebadon who has never acknowledged subordination to his brother Michael. He functions as an advisor to the Sovereign Son, but he gives counsel only on request. In the absence of the creator's son, he might preside over any high universe council, but would not otherwise participate in the executive affairs of the universe except as requested. This ambassador of paradise to Nevadon is not subject to the jurisdiction of the local universe government. Neither does his exercise authoritative jurisdiction in the executive affairs of evolving local universe except in the supervision of his liaison brethren the Faithfuls of Days, serving on the headquarters of the constellations. The Faithfuls of Days, like the Union of Days, never proffer advice or offer assistance to the constellation rulers unless it is asked for. 
These Paradise Ambassadors to the Constellations represent the final personal presence of the stationary sons of the Trinity functioning and advisory roles in the local universes. Constellations are more closely related to the super universe administration than local systems, which are administered exclusively by personalities native to the local universe. General Administration. Gabriel is the chief executive and actual administrator of Nebadon. Michael's absence from Salvington in no way interferes with the order conduct of the universe affairs. During the absence of Michael, as recently on the mission of reunion of Orvantin, master sons of paradise, Gabriel is the regent of the universe. At such times, Gabriel always seeks the counsel of Emmanuel of Salvington regarding all major problems. The father Melchizedek and Gabriel's first assistant when the bright and morning star is absent from Salvington, his responsibilities are assumed by this original Melchizedek son. The various sub-administrations of the universe has assigned to them certain special domains of responsibility. While in general, a system government looks after the welfare of its planets, it is more particularly concerned with the physical status of living beings, with biological problem, biologic problems. In turn, the constellation rulers pay special uh, special attention to the social and governmental conditions prevailing on the different planets and systems. A constellation government is chiefly exercised over unification and stabilization. Still higher up, the universe rulers are more occupied with the spiritual status of the realms. Ambassadors are appointed by jur juridical degree and represent universes to other universes. Consuls are representatives of constellations to one another and to the universe headquarters. They are appointed by legislative decree and function only within the confines of the local universe. Observers are commissioned by executive decree of a system sovereign to represent that system to offer systems and, of, and at the constellation capital, and they too function only within the confines of a local universe. From Salvington, broadcasts are simultaneously directed to the Constellation Headquarters, the System Headquarters, and to individual planets. All higher orders of celestial beings are able to utilize this service for communication with their fellows scattered throughout the universe. The universe broadcast is extended to all inhabited worlds regardless of their spiritual status. Planetary in Intercommunication is denied only those worlds under spiritual quarantine. Constellation broadcasts are periodically sent out from the headquarters of the constellation by the chief of the constellation fathers. Chronology, chronologically, chron, chronologically, not getting that word out, is reckoned, computed, and rectified by special group of beings on Salvington. The standard day of Nebadon is equal to the 18 days and six hours of Urantia time, plus two and one half minutes. The Nebadon year consists of a segment of time of universe swing in relation to the universal circuit and is equal to 100 days of standard universe time, about five years of Urantia time. Nebadon time broadcast from Salvington is the standard for the constellations and systems in this local universe. Each constellation conducts its affairs by Nebadon time, but the systems maintain their own chronolo chronology, chronology, I got it, as do the individual planets. The day in Satania, as reckoned on Jerusalem, is a, le a little less one hour, four minutes, 15 seconds than three days of Urantia time. These times are generally known as Salvington or universe time and Satania or system time. Standard time is universe time. The courts of Nebadon. The master son Michael is extreme is supremely concerned with but three things: creation, subsistence, and ministry. He does not personally participate in the judicial work of the universe. Creators never sit in judgment on their creatures. That is the exclusive function of creatures of high training in actual creature experience. The entire judicial mechanism of Nebadon is under the supervision of Gabriel. The high courts located on Salvington are occupied with problems of general universe import and with the appellate cases coming up from the system tribunals. 
There are 70 branches of these universal courts, and they function in seven divisions of 10 sections each. In all matters of adjudication, there presides a dual magistrate consisting of one judge of perfection, antedates, and one magistrate of ancient, ascendant experience. As regards jurisdiction, the local universe courts are limited to the following matters. The administration of local universe is concerned with creation, evolution, maintenance, and ministry. The universe tribunals are therefore denied the right to pass upon those cases involving the question of eternal life and death. This has no reference to natural death as it obtains on Urantia, but the question of the right of continued existence. Life eternal comes up for adjudication. It must be referred to the tribunals of Arvantin, and if decided adversely to the individual, all sentences of extinction are carried out upon the orders and through the agency of the rulers of the super government. The default or deflection of any of the local universal sons of God, which jeopardizes their status and authority as sons, is never adjudicated in the tribunals of the sun. Such a misunderstanding would be immediately carried to the super universe courts. The question of the readmission of any constituent part of the local universe, such as a local system, to the fellowship of full spiritual status in the assembly of the super universe. In all other matters, the courts of Salvington are final and supreme. There is no appeal and no escape from their decisions and decrees. However, unfairly human contentions may sometimes appear to be adjudicated on Urantia, and the universe justice and divine equity do prevail. You are living in a well-ordered universe, and sooner or later you may depend upon being dealt with justly and even mercifully. The legislative and executive functions. On Salvington, the headquarters of Nebadon, there are no true legislative bodies. The universe headquarters worlds are concerned largely with the adjudication. The legislative assemblies of the local universe are located on the headquarters of 100 constellations. The systems are chiefly concerned with the executive administrative work of the local creations. The system sovereigns and their associates enforce the legislative mandates of the constellation rulers and executive and execute the judicial decrees of the higher courts of the universe. While true legislation is not enacted at the universe headquarters, there do function on Salvington a variety of adversary and research assemblies variously constituted and conducted in accordance with their scope and purpose. Such are permanent, others disband upon the accomplishment of their objective. The Supreme Council of the local universe is made up of three members from each system and seven representatives from each constellation. Systems isolation do not have representation in this assembly, but they are permitted to send observers who attend and study all its deliberations. The 100 councils of supreme sanction are also situating on Salvington. The, president, the presidents of these councils constitute the immediate working cabinet of Gabriel. All finding of the higher universe adversary councils are referred either to the Salvington judicial bodies or to the legislative assemblies of the constellations. These high councils are without authority or power to enforce their recommendations. If their advice is founded on this functional laws of the universe, then when will the Nebadon courts issue rulings of execution? But if their recommendations have to do with local or emergency conditions, they must pass down to the legislative assemblies of the constellation for deliberative enactment and there to the system authorities for execution. These high councils are in reality the universe sub super legislations but their function without the authority of enactment and without the power of execution. While we speak of the universe administration in terms of courts and assemblies, it should be understood that these spiritual transactions are very different from more primitive and material activities of Urantia, which bear corresponding names. Presented by the chief of the archangels of Nebadon. And that is it. Very interesting. Um, 
I hope finally that whatever's going on upstairs, like what we just read, is like the reason why things are changing here. Appearing really bad. Really, really bad. But in the end of the day, it's cleaning out the cuck. So let's hope so. I want to thank all of you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed. Please hit that like button. Please subscribe to my channel. Please share. It's caring. And again, if you feel it within your heart to support my work and to help me out, must blessings and all that information is linked down below. Sending each and every one of you love and light, and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye, guys.